Hello and welcome to the country show. This is going to be a little bit different and it's going to be a little bit like me, a bit special. For the last couple of weeks, we have been putting together a country show. A show that you are soon going to be seeing in the next three episodes over the next three days. It is going to be as near to a show as we can put together in these times. At the moment we can all agree that 2020 is turning out to be a bit of a bitch. So to all of you in ag and all of you that love ag, this hopefully gives you a little bit of that taster of missing a country show but you get to see something like this. It's not going to be a country show. You're used to one because we're in it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest thing of this is, please, everything you see, if you're interested in anything, there will be a link below. Uh, another thing is, on behalf of this, all the proceeds that we get for this or these three episodes being watched will be given and split between two charities. Also, we have set up a Just Given page, Adam. The Just Given page will be in the link below. So click on it. If you can, I know times are hard, very hard, but if you can, please, please make a donation. Any donations are going to be split between two great causes. One is the NHS, and two is a charity that we've been brought in to be involved with, which is Wellchild. So anything is going to be split between those, whether it is from the money from the views or um, donations. the donations in the Just Given page. So guys, without any further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So guys, first stand of the show, Kubota stand, and we are here with Nick Vincent of Vincent Tractors, and he is gonna give us a massive show around this orange beast. So this is Kubota's M7172, so the biggest Kubota tractor that they do. It's 170 horsepower. This particular model is a power shift. Uh, they also do the KVT, so the, the Kubota variable transmission. Fairly new tractor on the market. Okay, so we have a bit of a um, bit of a walk around the tractor. So tier four emissions engine, so add blue. Um, it's running a, a 38 litre ad blue tank um, and 330 litre diesel. Come round, got our movable fenders, Zuderberg front linkage, um, 3.9 tonne lift. Um, this one front suspension, so front suspension standard uh, on the M7 range. Uh, cab suspension, air suspension on this one is standard, this is the premium model. Um, but they also do, dependent on spec, you can have mechanical cab suspension as well. So the tractor is designed and manufactured by uh, Kubota um, using premium parts. So it's running Dyna Spicer axles, uh, Bosch electrics, uh, and the transmission and back end on the tractor are all ZF. So very known, um, reputable, and then top end. It's a, it is seen as a premium tractor. Just from looking at the glass panel, you've got that one panel. So a big thing about the Kubota cab and the Kubota tractor is its visibility. Well, across the M7 range, the, the lift capacity is 9.4 tonne lift. It's uh, five spools, um, air brakes, um, Dramone push out pickup hitch, um, and obviously some tractor air brakes as well. And like I said, this one is, uh, is on your air suspension cab. Um, in terms of the working lights, it's running LED lights. Fantastic array of lights around the front. We've also got electric mirrors on this one. Okay, so it is a, is a premium spec model. Okay, this is a nice touch. So your PTO on, PTO off. Um, slightly different to maybe what you'd be used to with the one button. Um, your spools. Um, so if you're working a you know, tipping trailer or anything like that, it's quite a nice touch. And then your uh, your arms there, your linkage arms up and down. Okay, we'll just go into the cab now. Four nice steps, nice easy entrance into the cab. Three points of contact. Right guys, we're in the Kubota cab. 
and the first thing I've noticed in here is the sheer size of the display monitor on the other side of the cab. So Nick? Yeah, so this is the 12 inch K monitor screen, which has actually come across from Cavernland. Um, this was what, when they purchased Cavernland, this was part of a big part of um, uh, bringing the information systems into the Cavernland yeah. product. Um, really, really intuitive, very easy to use. Um, you know, your height, your speed of lift, your draft control. It's, it's a really, really s simple and easy operation. Um, it's quite clear to see what you need to do uh, on that control panel. Just so for all of you watching at home right now, the monitor is very, very clear, but at the moment you're getting the, gl or the glisten from the camera glass on glass, but it is spot on. Demo a model if you don't believe me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So start off with the basic controls, hydraulic shuttle, indicator lights, Probably hard for you to see over there, but just around here you've got all your uh, cab work lights. Right, so everything's really nicely laid out in the cab as you would expect it to be. So we'll start with the, with the transmission on this one. This is a it's five ranges and six speeds in each range. So plenty of gears, always able to find the gear that you're looking for. So this is, yeah, this is your sort of control stick as it were. You've got an auto box. You've got your, you know, your arms up and down. Forward reverse shuttle is also on there. And what's quite a nice touch is you've got your spools, you've got your spools, you know, to hand. Um, so just making everything nice and easy. Um, this little button on the inside here is just for a range change. Just a few little things I'm picking up on. All controls and displays are in arm reach. Now, other manufacturers, with my comical fingers, there's stuff on the back posts or along the top of the cab. Well, in the Kubota, none of that is there. It is all within eyesight, an eye shot, and arm reach. Yeah, just going back to the control panel then, speed of the lift, you've also got the manual option. This one locks out your rear linkage. This button here locks out your spools. You've got your manual throttle um, preset engine revs. You've got your diff lock, four wheel drive, and then your neutral button there. You've also, if, if maybe you're not particularly comfortable with touching the screen and you want something a little bit more physical, there is also a control panel down here. You know, this tractor is, is loader ready, so um, obviously your loader control stick, but currently controlling your front linkage. So you've got your four speed PTO, you've got your power socket, and you've also got uh, your trailer air brakes as well, so you can be used to, to release any pressure. Nick, any last thoughts on? Uh this little showpiece. Yeah, uh, thanks Justin. Yeah, a few last sort of final bits from me really. I think, you know, if you are in the market for a tractor, I would urge you to at least consider the Kubota. Um, give us a chance, give us a ring. It's, um, you know, it's a, it's a four cylinder, 6.1 litre tractor. Um, there is no four cylinders on the market running an engine of that size. It's got plenty of power, loads of torque. Um, it's a, a economical on fuel. It's, um, a standard five-year 3,000 hour warranty on it and I think fundamentally this is running a Kubota engine and anyone that's had or knows of you know knows the reliability of the Kubota you know it's got history with its excavators with its smaller compact machines and now obviously they're really pushing into this big agricultural market and they are they do want to become serious players so you've got good backup you've got some strong Kubota dealers across the country you know, if you're in the southwest, please give us a give us a shout, um, and you know we'd be keen to to have a chat and maybe try and organise some kind of demo. Taking a lot of intelligence from the Cavernon and Vicon brand and putting it into their tractors, like you've seen with the screen, really really easy to use, um, and obviously the full range of of Cavernon and Kubota products. Um, so we'd be keen to keen to talk to you. Thank you. So thank you very 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 much, Nick and Vincent Tractors for hosting this as you guys can all see i came in matching colors orange on orange did i do that on purpose yeah i'll leave that up to you lot to <laughs> you lot to decide but again huge thank you to vincent tractors for having us and showing us this awesome kubota again if you have got any questions or inquiries go to your local kubota um dealer yeah Go to your local Kubota dealer, 
have a demo, see what you think. Again, if you're Southwest, talk to Vincent Tractors. Very, very awesome guys to deal with down here. Nick himself is brilliant. So thank you very, very much, Nick. You might see a, uh, you might see one on the farm soon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep that on the down low. <laughs> right now, without any further ado, let's go back and see where Mr. His Royal Shortness is. Looks good over there, Justin. So from one orange to another, we are here at RSM Beers in up on the Coon stand here with Simon. <laughs> Guys, welcome to the Coon Stand here with RSM Beers. Today we've got a 40.2 axis HEMC. Um, this one's a hydraulically driven machine, ISO bus controlled. Uh, measure, the torque is measured through the hydraulic motors, which gives us our spread. So the spread is measured and altered every second so, the, so we can calibrate left and right independently. Um, this one's a five bag machine, 3,200 litre capacity. Uh, roll over sheet, obviously. Um, we do, this is one of the higher end machines. Um, we do an MEMC, which is mechanically driven. We do some more simple machines, which are just PTO and just a spool for on and off. Um, and we also do some smaller capacities and a bigger trail machine. How many meters does it spread and does it have border control? So this machine is 18 to 24 meters. Uh, this, because it's hydraulically driven, he, he doesn't need a tally max system for boiler control because it can alter the rates left and right so we can bring in one disc to slow down more than the other so that's our border control we don't need a system that comes down on the H on an MEMC or a 30.2 then we use a tally max system because it's PTO driven so that this is the same speed right. also on the stand here we've got the Kuhn GF7902 diameter rakes this one obviously 7.9 meters 7902 um, eight rotor big box frame build um, heavy duty headstock uh, on these on the larger diameter tethers we have short tine arms uh, so we get a closer pickup from the front wheel giving us better ground following and giving us a better projectile of the crop we can also adjust the pickup height to the, on the wheels individually so print a fantastic machine obviously digi drive as well we coom with the pioneers of the digi drive system so this one here as you can see is a drawstring so can we get this turner here with hydraulic yes yeah so the pull string on this is what they call a oblique angling yeah so you're kicking it away from the hedge yeah um we can have that on hydraulic so it makes life easier for you guys you know especially you hay guys yep. want to make everything on the crop um, kick it right away from the hedge and into the field so all I can be added hydraulically that is it from the coon stand so a massive massive thank you to simon and rsm beers for showing us around the coon stand and thank you very much again thank you brilliant and so let's go and see what justin is up to so here at the show i'm at the new holland wilcox's stand and to show us around, we've got Dave Connerbeer, who has kindly uh, let us have his time, and he is going to take it from here. Hi guys, welcome to CR Wilcox. I'd like to show you around the New Holland T6180 DCT. With this tractor, we have a six cylinder, 175 horsepower FBT engine. So we come around the front here. We've got uh, a 50 key tractor, so we've got suspended front axle uh, with inboard brakes, front linkage on this model. Uh, you could also have just a plain weight frame. Come around the side here, it's uh, selective catalytic reduction, so we have got a cat here on the side. Um, 
add blue goes into the cap to take away the nitrous oxide so it doesn't go anywhere near the engine we've got the correct amount of fuel in the engine and then uh, we'll sort out here as i mentioned yeah 50k so we've got air brakes and on this one on the rear linkage we've got 7864 kilos of lift again cap suspension because we're 50k as mentioned it's a t6180 dct so that stands for dynamic command transmission so what that is is a free range transmission with eight gears in each range with a double clutch system so one clutch does the even gears one clutch does the odd gears so it gives you a much smoother change a much faster change because the next gear is already engaged ready to go let's jump inside so dave what is special about this new holland cab well, we've got the deluxe seat package on this one. There's a wide range of seats available now for the selection of the customer. So on the sidewinder here, we can change gear by either pushing the lever forward, by touching the button, or by hitting the cruise control. On this particular model, we have the exhaust brake. So this will save your brakes. Which is down here, guys. There it is, there it is. Uh, works best on six cylinder. So this is ideal on this machine just saves your brakes. T6 comes with the Horizon cab, which is a four post cab with premium visibility. So here we have something I'm very interested in because, well, quite frankly, as everyone knows, I love mowing, but I don't know a lot about the New Holland mower, but Dave, fortunately, is here to help. Here we have the New Holland disc car. It's a 3.2 meter machine. We've got to look at the bed. So one of the unique things about this, you only need a free degrees of tilt to make a perfect cut and you say well that's not very much well it isn't no the reasons they get this it's got a smooth deck underneath it's completely covered with skids blades you can see that they are really snug so this is partly why it allows to only have three degrees tilt to get a perfect cut and then age regrowth uh, let's have a look at the top hats you'll see that they're open but they've got deflectors all the way around them to throw grass away. And then at the end of mowing the field, if there is a little bit of grass in there when the machine stopped, you can easily put your hand in and pull it out. So some more features on this mower. It's got headland height adjustment. So when you're on the headland and you pick your mower up, by moving this Allen key here, you can adjust the height of the mower raises off the ground. So if you've got large swaths, you obviously have to get a long way off the ground. Small swaths and yeah, not so high and get it back into work much quicker. Uh, we've also got hydraulic flow. So this is very important to allow the machine to follow the contours of the ground, and leave, give you an even cut and a better finish and aid regrowth. It also has hydraulic stone release. So if you've managed to hit something in the field, the motor will come back round and then return to work. This machine is quite unique and it has three transport positions. One position as it is now, but folded up the side. It can go horizontally at the back, or it can be span round and just vertically at the back. With these three different modes, if you've got a, a lane with lots of trees on, then ideally laid out the back is the ideal way. If you've got a narrow gateway, which you, 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 know, you can't pull in very easily, then folded up behind is your easiest way. If you're in a block of land and you're just going from field to field, then just fold it up the side and get onto the next field and get mowing again quickly. That was pretty awesome. Guys, I hope you've all enjoyed watching that. I'd like to make a massive, massive thank you to Wilcox's down here in Devon and uh, Dave Connerbeer as well for showing us around on this beautiful New Orleans gear. Again, we all know I've got a big place in my heart for the big blues, but I'm also interested in that mower. For any information, I will leave it in the link below if you want to get hold of Wilcox's on any of the machinery you've seen or any machinery they may have. And now, you'll probably be missing him, back over to Adam. So from machinery to cattle, to the South Devon cattle, today's world, they are used for beef, but they used to be milked as well. The term South Devon is from, well, South Devon, in Devon from a place called the South Ham. It originated from Normandy and they were imported during the Norman invasion. These South Devon cows are the largest of their native breed. As of uh, years of breeding, we have gone from old South Devon herd to the old South Devon herd. Very placid and tame herd. Right, so as you can see, the South Devon are very tame and very placid. Very easy to deal with. And as you can see, 
she loves the back strap. At this show, I have made myself a judge, and she has won the best in show. Because she's a good girl and a good looking heifer. Well done, you! Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed seeing us very picked up this session. Here's a surprise for you. You all know him. He's a big YouTuber. He's a good guy. So from one cow shed to another, it's Farmer P. Who said that? Oh, hello, Adam. All right, then. Thanks, mate. I hope you're enjoying yourself down in the... Hang on a second. Down in the, shh, down in the south end of the showground. It seems to be a bit sunnier down there than it is up in the middle, middle section. Um, so, uh, yes, enjoyed that, Adam. Uh, good job. We're in the midsection of the showground. I'm joined by the farmer's daughter. Hello. And we are looking at Dexter cattle. So um, these are our little Dexters. Big Dexters. All right, big little Dexters. Yeah. Yeah, with Dexter cattle, you can have the shorts or the longs. Um, shorts, I've never really bothered with because it's more like a Labrador. Um, the longs, you can actually get a steak out of a long one. Yeah, so Dexter cattle in the late 20th century were almost gone. There were um, only, I think, numbers were measured in dozens. Um, and in fact, the only way they brought the breed back, as I recall, was they had to uh, breed uh, Dexters with the Kerry cow, which is also another small um, Irish breed. And it took them quite a few years to get, um, get any numbers back uh, and into what we call pure. Uh, there is the Dexter Cattle Society, which uh, this herd used to be a member of. We don't do it so much now because we breed our animals for beef. But um, yes, the Dexter cow, a perfect small holder's cow. So no good for big farmers who've got lots and lots of space, lots of grass and loads of buildings. But if you've got a bit of rough area or rough grazing or no shelter, this could well be the a cow for you. Sorry? Wet ground. Wet ground. We don't want it too wet because the legs are shortly sink. No, but <laughs> they don't make out. That's when you want the long-legged ones, isn't it? You don't, don't want those short ones. <laughs> they don't make out as much mat. Is that right? This is true. What Abby just said is, the other thing is because they're short cattle and don't weigh as much, they don't poach the ground, so they can stay out longer. So, in effect, if you've got some rough grazing, uh, little shelter, uh, uh, poor forage value, these little fellas will actually thrive on it, won't you? Yes, boss. So, um, I'm not sure about Adam's assessment of best cow in the show. I think there might have been a little bit of bias going on there, don't you reckon? So, and I'm actually quite surprised that Adam, excuse me, it's uh, it's raining in the midsection, uh, that Adam is so um, adamant on um, judging a large beast as show champion, when I would have thought that one of these would be more his size. Because let's face it, you wouldn't need a step ladder for one of these, would you? Milk crate. That's all you need, isn't it? Milk crate. I don't need a milk crate. No, I don't need a milk crate. <laughs> Not that I would. No, no, because. <laughs> no. No. Okay. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. How are you snoring? Eh? Is that because I said the name Adam? She fancies you, Adam. I showed her a picture. Look, Adam. Ooh, you want him, don't you? We think, the farmer's daughter and I, that thing there, <laughs> have decided that um, you're incorrect. And in fact, one of these, I think, mm, that one. Look at the rack on that. That is show champion. That and, one, or, and, or that one. That one there. Pink nose red. Look at that. Pert, firm. Yeah, and she's a good looking cow as well. Hello, Smiley. This is Bramble. He is, believe it or not, pedigree Dexter Ball. Uh, and quite, for a small fella, quite a beastie. So. Again, lovely straight back, good shoulders, nice broad head. Decent set of dingle dangles. So, uh, yeah, if all his progeny come out looking like him, 
then we should be doing okay. All right, he hasn't got the ass of the Continental, but tastes better anyway. I've got some cracky looking cows on the farm, haven't I? I've been waiting for you to come to the farm for <laughs> weeks so that I could pick on you. I know, I'm using my holiday to be here. Oh. I should be in Penzance. I know, but you're not in Penzance. So. What? Again. What? It's fine, it's fine. What's fine? This. I what? mean, it's painful, but it's fine. <laughs> what are you trying to say? It's all painful. All right, on that note, uh, again, thank you. I hope you're all enjoying the show. Um, I think I'll probably try and send you back to the sunny end, maybe in the south end of the showground where Justin is. So, uh, Justin, mate, back to you. Hi, guys. Thank you, Farmer P. That looked awesome up there with you. Now, back down here in the south part of the show, I'm here with Matty Ferguson, MST, with Salesman Ben, and he's going to take us around the tractor. to use his spools from the cab on a buck rake or a mower or whatever he sees fit depending on the different job that he's doing. Engine wise we're looking at 190 horsepower with a boost up to 220. The power on this machine comes from a 6.6 .6 litre Adco Sisu power engine which is a TF5 engine so that means it's basically all up to standards and specs and the engines are where we need to be to comply with the government regulations and emissions. Right, let's have a look in the cab and see what we've got. Jumping in this Fergie and spot on the other side, a very smart new monitoring system, different to the ones I've seen in the Fergie before. Ben? So this here is a new Fieldstar 5 touchscreen, ISO bus and guidance. So nice and easy, nice and simple to get into. You can still access all of your old tractor functions that you could on your old Data 4 and Data 3 screen. But this now just opens up a whole new ease of use for a long operator in the tractor, a long day, trying to make it all nice and simple. This here is just a job for what you need to be doing. So this here is a 7719, as we said earlier on. This tractor is fitted with a Dyna VT transmission, which gives the operator nice, smooth speeds for any operation. So there is no gears whatsoever. You're purely matching speeds, which is nice and easy for the operator. In this feature as well, we've also got an exclusive spec tractor. So basically what that means is, you get this screen here as standard, you get your four electric spools as standard, and you get the climate control and the electric mirrors as standard as well. Right guys, any of you that haven't driven a Fergie, there are two sets of spool switches at the back. So they're split apart rather than being in one bank on your fingertips, if that makes sense to everyone. So Ben, take it away. This tractor here is fitted with four spools to the rear, but it's also got front linkage and a set of spools to the front. So this is what we got called a mid-mount rear valve. So the idea between this is that I can still use my first and second spool over here, third and fourth spool over here, as well as still being able to use my front linkage on these two spools over here. And also because it's a mid-mount valve, using this little blue button down here, I'm able to swap from front to rear at the push of a button, giving simultaneous movement for the for the user, nice and easy, nice and simple. The Massey tractors have always been renowned for their, their hydraulic lifting capacities, and the 771019 is no different. This tractor here has got 9.6 tonne of lift capacity, which is going to give the operator more than enough capacity for the whole range of jobs that they're going to do. Four electric spools on this tractor enable to give the operator ease of use for many functions at the back. One of those many functions is this hydraulic top link that we've got here. 
This has come standard from the factory, which basically means anything for a plowing implement or a cultivating implement. The operator doesn't have to get out and alter his machine on the go. He can simply do it from the ease of his cab on the fly, nice and simple. Now Ben's just brought in a massive Ferguson telehandler, which I've not seen up in person before. So take it away, Ben. I'm going to show you around our demo Massey Ferguson TH6534 telehandler. So this range here is six and a half meters lift to 3.4 ton. This is the middle of the range. They offer a six meter machine and a seven meter machine as well. This machine here is fitted with Michelin 46070 R24 tires, which is a tire that is specifically made for the telehandler market. If we move around to the front, this machine here is fitted with a Mana 2 headstock. This is spec from the factory, but can be changed to requirements of the customer depending on what they use currently on their machine. Why don't we jump up in the cab and I'll show you a few of the controls. All the Massey Ferguson telehandlers are fitted with a hydrostatic transmission. Couple that along with the 190 litre a minute of oil flow that this machine gives, it gives the operator a lot of oil flow depending on what they're doing. To control all of that, You've got your nice ergonomic joystick here on the right hand side. These levers on top are proportional. The more you push it, the more you get. And obviously with any telehandler, you can limit the function, you can limit the oil flow, depending on the job that you're doing. So if it doesn't need 190 litres a minute of oil flow for a bucket brush or a yard brush, you can change that right down using these buttons here on the top. This machine has also got an automatic handbrake. So as soon as the machine is put into the neutral position, like we are now, the handbrake would automatically come on. As soon as I then flick it into forward or into reverse, give it some revs, the handbrake would release itself and move off and go away nice and simple. For ultimate user friendliness, this machine here has been spec with a two speed shuttle option. So not only have I got a full reverse shuttle here on my right hand side, where my controls are for my boom, I've also got it here on the left hand side as well. So depending on every job that you're doing, you've always got a nice, smooth, simple operation for the end user. Being a hydrostatic transmission, this has got the ability to have a first and a second range. Your second range would be predominantly road work, with your first range being for your yard work and slow field work as well. Now I spent my life in telehandlers for long periods of time, and this one doesn't have a post on the back corner, which Ben, I'm guessing offers better visibility? Visibility is fantastic on the machine. Like you said, that rear quarter on this machine here just gives that end user a lovely bit of visibility depending on where they're going and what they're doing. But unfortunately, because you've got no pillar there and lots of glass, it does make it nice and hot. But don't worry, because this machine's got air conditioning, so we've got you covered, rain or shine, not a problem. Right, guys, I expect you're all thinking the same thing. <laughs> what a sales pitch. Thank you massively to Ben. Thank you hugely to MST for allowing this to happen and also Massey Ferguson. So, I do believe that both the tractor and the telehandler are up for demo. Both available, both for demo and for sale. Both for demo, both for sale. For any information, I'll leave a link below. Give it a click and get a hold of these guys. Thanks to the guys at Massey Ferguson again. I'm literally just gonna shoot to the next stand. Just hightailed it over here and we are now at the McHale stand. To show us around these two machines, I introduce Arnold Shortslinger. Take it away, Arnold. Hi guys, I'm Arnold Shortslinger. Welcome to the McHale stand. As you can see, just gotta, you know, play on my moustache. As you can see, we've got a McHale V6 750 variable round baler. As you can see, this is taking the place of the V660 baler and it's been totally remodeled. So this is a variable baler and it has a 15 knife semi-automatic chopper system. It has a 2.1 meter pickup with galvanized bands. They've made a few improvements up here. So if you're a farmer struggling, not enough net in the field, well, we fought you, Mr. Farmer. We fought you. Now you can carry free rows of net on this particular baler because we at McHale are very good like that. You can see, guys, she's auto lube and she's got a centralized greasing point. So when you're greasing her, pumping her full of grease, you're making all those shafts and rollers 
all pretty nice and slippery. I don't know about you guys, but I love my women like my bales, nice and round. And with the Mikhail V6750, you're gonna get that perfect round bale. Hiya guys, don't worry, I'm not in prison. I'm here stood next to the 991 high speed wrapper. Okay Arnold Schwarzlinger, what is new about the new Mikhail wrapper? Well Justin, what's not new for the Mikhail high speed wrapper? So, this is new. These strengthening bars on the axle. So this is new. We've gone for a simul. It's made in Italy. Stronger, better, greener jack. You can see we've added loads of reflectors. So when you're driving down those narrow country lanes at night, what's coming towards you? A big green wrapping machine. Now, we don't want you to drive into our great big green wrapping machine. So we put on reflectors so you can see our wrapper. Now, if you're wondering what this, little bougie bougie is now that is for fully automatic loading so as you can see we've changed the mat from yellow to gray so you're wondering why am i sat down here it's because new lights we've put on a whole new lighting system to light up the world guys massive massive thank you to mikhail for doing this for us uh huge thank you to uh holsters for help setting this up as well fortunately they couldn't be here with uh, one of their reps but fortunately Arnold Schwarzlinger he was on hand and he got to show us around these balers so thank you very much to him and again thank you very much to Mikhail right guys I'm off to find his royal shortness now and see what he's been doing through today's show I just hightailed it here as I've just said um, and where would any show be without the flower tent um, obviously you guys at Chelsea Flower Show this year you haven't got to see anything hopefully you enjoy our flower tent um, the arrangement being put on today by the lovely ladies is absolutely fantastic don't you think Ed? I've got to say I've never been in a uh, flower tent before and I've got to say I'm really impressed really impressed with it I mean the smell the aromas oh absolutely fantastic absolutely fantastic well done girls round of applause for them but again, the flowers on, on, on stage today are unbelievable. Um, more of us farmers should go in there and have a look around. You arable boys especially would probably really appreciate it. But hope you've enjoyed day one of the show. Thank you very, very much for watching. If and <coughs> if you could do so for us. I think I'm allergic to the flowers, Justin. <laughs> if you could do so for us and hit the subscribe for Farmer P, that would be fantastic. For us, could you do us a favor and press share? So remember, if you can, please donate. Again, link will be in the description below. Anything you've seen in the show today, you can find in the link below if you're interested in something that you've seen. So don't hesitate, go have a click and have a conversation with someone that might be able to help you on what you're looking for. Until tomorrow, thank you very much. Cheers.